FL500 Civic Type R, MK5 GR Super. Which one is better? That is what we will be talking today. In today's video, a lot of y'all been asking me, which one do I think is better? Do I think the MK5 GR Super is better? Or do I think the FL500 Civic Type R is better? Today, I'm gonna give y'all my best perspective on which one is better. I'm gonna be talking about performance. I'm gonna be talking about price. I'm gonna be talking about comfortability. I'm gonna be talking about value. I'm gonna be talking about pretty much almost everything that I compare to these cars that comes off of my head that I can remember. I took a few notes, so I make sure I don't miss some stuff, but uh, I will be doing more content on these two cars together. This is just the first one. Uh, I know a lot of y'all been asking, so here it goes. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've been with the channel, I really, really appreciate it. And if you like cars like these, go ahead and subscribe to the MOC. That's me, Race Car Friends, Q to Chaotic, and Blueprint 1LE. MK5 GR Super versus the FL500 Civic Type R. Let's go. Hit that subscribe button. All right, guys. So off the rip, off the bat, from the jump, we got to go what we first can see. We got to go with the visuals, right? Which car looks better, right? In my opinion, some of y'all might disagree with me. I think the FL5 looks way better, right? Um, no BBL needed, none of that necessary, no extra cosmetics. Straight off the gate, it just looks better. Um, got that wide body on it, no BBL, she just thick. Black rims, red calipers, the Brembo's, black side mirrors, the wing, the three pipes in the back, tri-pipe thing going on. To me, it's just the sexier vehicle. Um, now y'all can get in the comments and let me know what y'all think. But just for me, just just if I just had to pick off appearance, just off the look, the aesthetic, I'm going with the FL5. Now the MK5 is not bad, but I feel like for this car to really be set off, they gotta have a wing or something like that to set it off. Like stock for stock, with nothing done to it, it's it's, it's not a bad looking vehicle. But if you're talking about which one looks better, to me. I'm going FL5. Both of them look good now, but if I had to choose, like just, okay, I walk up in the club, two girls up in there, they saying which one I'm choosing, I'm going FL5. Yeah, so y'all get in the comments, y'all let me know what y'all think. Second thing I want to talk to y'all about is about exhaust noise. Now, both of these vehicles, in my opinion, they both need upgraded exhaust um, from the gate. Um, to me, in my opinion, the, F, the FL5 sounds a little bit more quiet than the MK5, but let me prank, let me crank both of them up, and then y'all give me y'all opinion on what y'all think. Give me one second. Let's go. know what you guys think but for me in terms of exhaust noise stock for stock mk5 is the clear winner but it's nothing to be super duper impressed about uh that was in r mode with the type r and that was in sport mode with the super so they were both wearing their highest modes valves clearly all the way open second thing we got to go to is engine right and this we're gonna have the inline six we're gonna make about 382 horsepower which is capped to me. I think it's a little bit more than that. And this one, we got an inline four. It's gonna make 315 horsepower. Y'all correct me if I'm not correct on that. But to me, both of these cars are sneaky crazy, right? This one is gonna be way faster, zero to 60, probably zero to 150, all that. But top end speed, this one right here is gonna be faster. Which is crazier because this one has the bigger block. This one has a smaller block. But it's just a monster. I don't know what Honda did, but this one right here is going to go 177 stock top speed. This one's going to do 155 before it hits that rev limiter. Now, obviously, when you take the ECU out, 
start doing some modification, this one just becomes a totally different monster beast. At the same time, whatever Kobe Bryant was saying in that commercial with Kanye. This one right here, same thing, but the difference is this car right here, I don't think you really want to mod like that. And I'll explain this further in the video. This car right here, I see why you would want to mod it. And like I said, I'm going to explain that further in the video. But in terms of me, with the engine bays, I like the way the engine bay looks better on the MK5. I like the design. But I got to give the win on that to the FL5. Simply because this is a Honda motor. They didn't borrow from nobody. Toyota, obviously. This is BMW all the way through and through. So got to give the win to the originator. The one that didn't borrow from nobody. So FL5 on the engine bay. All right. Now I'm gonna get into like price and all that type stuff. And then we're gonna hop in, talk about how comfortable each car is, how each car rides, and I'm gonna give y'all a POV perspective from both vehicles. Let's go. So let's get down to the price of things. Obviously, I don't know if it's obvious, but the MK5 Super is more expensive than the FL5. This one right here, I think I paid 45,000. I pay MS a little bit below MSRP, but I think it's 45, 44, something like that. Um, I actually financed about 55 or something like that because I got every warranty. This one I bought for 60,000, but I financed 66,000 and I bought a lot of warranties with this one too. Not every warranty, but almost. I bought every warranty for this one. This one I got almost every warranty. Um, so this one is about 20K more than this one. Now we're talking about bang for buck book for bang ah this car is a great great performer man it's nasty it's probably the quickest vehicle i've ever owned not fastest but quickest stock for stock quickest vehicle i've ever owned this vehicle right here is just special so if i had to pick one which gives you the best bang for your buck i'm going with the ff500 type r man this car like i i can't understand how Honda was able to make a $45,000 vehicle this capable. Now that's if you can get it at MSRP, which you should. The markups is crazy, especially in this economy with the rates, that's crazy. But if you can get one of these at MSRP, this is the best bang for your buck. This car to me is not $20,000 better than this car. That's just my opinion. Y'all get in the comments and tell me what y'all think. With this FL5, you're gonna get a car that's iconic, you're gonna get a car that's rare. You get in the machine, a one-on-one. -on -one. It's one of those things that you truly won't understand until you drive it, until you own it, until you experience it, until you live with it. And all my FL5 owners can attest to this. Y'all get in the comments, y'all let these guys know that this is no cap. Now this vehicle right here is a machine now. It's super crazy, super fast, super bad. But I can't say that it's $20,000 more better than this one. I don't know if I'm, y'all know I'm, English is like a second language to me. Look, cause, and the reason I say that, right? Cause if I take this car 60, this car is 45. Okay, let's call it 15,000. My math a little bit off. When I put $15,000 in this FL5, it's gonna do damage to this. And that's all I'm saying. And then if you got a family, you know, if you need the extra space, you need the practicality, this car is gonna be worth more to you than this one. Cause it's a coupe, only two people can get in here. You can put your whole family in here if you need to. So, with that being said, personally for me, I just feel like you're gonna get the more val the most value out of the FL5 Honda Civic Type R out of both. Now, this car right here, this is the car that you get when you already got your cars, or if you're single, or you just want a car that's a fun car, and you know what I'm saying? And you just want something super fast and crazy, and you got a lot of money, expendable income to do, this car gets you get. But if you just want a sports car that can be a family car, do everything and you got a little bit of bread too that you want to put down on the car you get this one you know what i'm saying because you could daily both but like i said if you if you need that practicality the fl5 is just gonna kill this one that's just what it is y'all let me know y'all opinion though get in the comments so guys we talked about a few things already now we got to talk about the meat and potatoes we're gonna talk about the performance and y'all will get to see performance they're gonna see the comfortability i'm about to drive both right now when we do vr a pov drive which one do we start with first? Y'all swipe up and let's see. Guys, we are outside in the MK5. <laughs> Man, 
this car right here, man, is a rocket ship. Rocket ship. Like, there's no other way to describe it besides Batman's, um, Batman's car. Like, you know, when the Batman and the Batman build, that's the only other way to describe this. This vehicle right here is super fast. The infotainment screen, the infotainment center is super reactive, very quick. I have no complaints whatsoever. Right now, we're in sports mode, and this vehicle is just, I mean, it's... I'll tell the story. <laughs> this thing right here is, is ballistic, man. Like, I mean, there's no way that this car should be this fast at this price point. Now, if you've been with the channel for a while, you know I had a Z011 LE. A Z011 LE to date is probably the fastest car I've ever owned in terms of stock. Zero to 60, this car gets it in my opinion. Zero to 150, this car gets it in my opinion. Now, after we get past 150, the limiter is going to kick in and then the Z01 is going to eat us up. But in terms of quickness, this is the quickest car that I have ever owned. The turbo noise in here is amazing. stiff suspension and that's when we come we talk about being comfortable um the supra is way more comfortable i think that's probably they probably bought, also borrowed that from the bmw factory <laughs> like it, it, it borrowed a few internals and it borrowed that comfortability that you get in the bmw product i mean this car right here is, is special man I just feel blessed to be able to give y'all a review off of both of them because both of them are special. Like, this car is incredibly, incredibly quick. When I first got it, I used to hit the rev limiter 24 seven, simply because it's just, it, it would accelerate that fast. And um, I'm gonna give y'all a rev with the window down. You know, the car is warm a little bit. We've been running a little bit. Saying, got them gunshots going a little bit. Yeah, this car is just it's just nuts. Um it's nuts. What can I say? Like I like I I'm, I'm, I don't know how to really describe it in terms of performance. This, I mean I'm gonna do a zero to sixty test in here soon. I'm gonna do another zero to 60 sets in the um, F05 as well. But this car right here is just, it's one of a kind. I mean, Toyota really did its thing. Another reason why I went with the Toyota, I'm gonna speak about the value of this vehicle, is that Toyotas, they hold their value so incredibly well. Um, actually, if you sold your Toyota around COVID time, they probably paid you way more than what you even bought it for. And if you were to sell your Toyota, right now wherever it is no matter what brand it is it's going to hold its value like obviously the more expensive the better it's going to hold with toyota and 
That's all the way from the Tacomas, Sequoias, Tundras, Highlanders, Forerunners, Supra, you know, Corollas, Camry. I feel like Toyota is just a great brand to invest in because you're gonna get that value and you're not gonna go crazy upside down when you go to trade it in or you know, when you go to sell it after it's paid off, you're gonna get a good value for it. And that's one thing that I just really appreciate about this vehicle. But performance, man, Toyota and BMW came together. I know people had a joke, they call it a BMW. Which, it, you know, it is, in a way, but in the same way, it's stamped by Toyota. And this car is just a great product. I feel like you get a car like this, you don't lose. I mean, it's, it's, it's special, right? It's special in the fact that it holds its value, that it's so fast, that it's reliable. I mean, it got a lot going for itself. Now, in terms of maintenance, I would think, off the top of my head, I would think that this one is more expensive, obviously, because it has the BMW products with it. But um, when you buy the Toyota new, they give you two, years, two free years of maintenance with the oil changes and tire rotation. So you're really not gonna feel that. You're gonna feel the tires. You're gonna feel the um, brakes and rotors once you get there. And those are gonna be expensive, of course. But they're gonna be expensive on the FL5 as well. So in terms of maintenance for both cars, it's pretty much spade for spade on maintenance. But if we talking about straight up performance, stock for stock, out the box, nothing else. This car dominates the FL5. The FL5 just got it on handling, I would say. I'll say the FL5 probably has it on handling and probably, I say fun factor, they're probably even. And the reason I say the even is like, this car could be fun, but the handling with the FL5 is just so crazy. And it's fast at the same time that the FL5 just got that the handling on a lot. It just the fun factor in the handling the FL5 is gonna go because once again the problem that I have with this vehicle is the same problem I have with the Z01. Once you get in the third gear, fourth gear, you're in go to jail territory. Same could be true of the FL5, but it's more manageable. Like people gonna stop you in the super way before they're gonna stop you in the FL5 Honda Civic type one. Because when they see the Honda Civic, like I said, they just it's a perception that oh it's just a Honda Civic. Like you see a coupe especially mine red yeah your ass is grass they stop you you know what i'm saying but that fl5 is like oh man it's just a honda this is a honda mine is business but there y'all have it man i'm gonna try to um give y'all a couple more pulls real quick like short pulls just to show y'all how like fast this car is like i know the person behind me probably pissed but check it out That's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are in the FL5 Honda Civic Type R. We are in our mode. And as previously stated, which I think remains true, and if you've driven both of the Supra and the FL5 Honda Civic Type R, you can testify that's true, is that the FL5 Honda Civic Type R just handles different. This car is still extremely fast. want to go down to uh, Florida go race for our friends and take the Supra and do a couple test runs against each other in the car in the Supra and the Type R on rolls. I feel like from a dig the Supra is going to eat it all day but from a roll race this FL5 might get that Supra a taste for its money. This car is fast, it's super bad and it's special. If I ever had a custom plate on this vehicle, I will call it 38, cause she is special. She's special. Um, to me, out of the two cars, this one is gonna probably be the more iconic one, simply because, now, when I say more iconic, I mean MK5, not MK4. And I say it's more iconic than MK5, cause I can't take away the fact that they adopted a lot of stuff from BMW. Although they did, per, you know, perfect the B58 and make it a monster machine, 
the Honda FL5, it has its own engine. You know, they didn't call on anybody else for assistance. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like when LeBron joined a big three. You know, great player, but you needed help. You didn't, you didn't do it by yourself. Same thing with this. This is like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan had a hell of a team too, but for the most part, you know, well, for the only part, he never switched teams. He did it with one team. He did it where he was at. He got it done. Um, I use that same comparison with the FL5. This car right here is just, it's special. And, and it's hard to explain that to somebody unless they drive it. Because if, it was, if you just hear me talking about it, it'll sound like an exaggeration. But if you actually drive it, this way you drive, it's, 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 that's when it comes alive. That's when you start to understand what 100 grand Nate is talking about. With that being said, a lot of y'all asked me about the shifter, right? Um, the main one, the Supra, at first, I thought it was smoother than the FL5 Type R until I got back in the FL5 Type R after driving the Super for a while. This transmission right here is definitely smoother. It's the easier one to drive, in my opinion. Now the Supra, I can say this about this, it's, it's very, very hard to stall out in the Supra. And this one is easier to stall out in, but it's easier to drive this one. I hope that makes sense. Cause I know that probably just sounds stupid as hell. But uh, it's harder to stall in the, in the MK5 but it's easier to drive the FL5. Hopefully y'all can relate to what I'm talking about. Um, this car right here is just, it's different, bro. Like, it's just different. Um, I've been hearing a lot of people, you know, I just dropped my 30,000 mile review. You can go watch that if you wanna go watch it last video. Talking about this vehicle and how it's been performing in 30,000 miles, I've had no issues. I'm getting the speaker fixed because I be blasting my music too loud. And the center console I broke one day when I was putting my backpack in the car. But besides that, man, this car has been absolutely phenomenal. And it's almost unfair to the MK5 because I haven't had it as long. I'm pretty sure the MK5 will be as reliable as well. But... comes down to what you're using it for in a way <clears throat> i am going to reveal to y'all which one i think i would get because i just want to give y'all the real you know i always keep it 100 grand with y'all and you know have full transparency but to be honest both of these cars i look at them as like my kids like you don't you don't love one kid more than the other you know which one is more capable of doing a certain thing than the other one you know what i'm saying you know their talent levels you'll know their tolerance levels you'll know they you know personalities same thing i feel like this one's like bro, i love them the same but if i had to choose one to do a certain job i know which one i would choose y'all get in the comments right now and let me know which one y'all think i would choose and then you tell me at the end of it if what you chose is what i told y'all but like i'm gonna tell y'all once again man both of these vehicles i can't lose <laughs> I mean, god dang, man. Like, Toyota and Honda, they both make some great products. And I just feel like as car enthusiasts, we are highly blessed and highly favored to be able to experience this. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. They trying to push this EV crap. Hopefully that doesn't continue. Um, hopefully they, internal, they, they, they continue to keep internal combustion engines going. I see no reasons why to go to EV because if you want to go into the facts, it's not better for the environment, but that's a whole nother conversation. But let's enjoy this. Car enthusiasts, women and men, let's 
embrace this time because we are in a nostalgic time and I feel like we're not really aware of it. But let's just slow down time and live in the present because right now we are able to enjoy some incredible machines while they're still, I wouldn't say reasonable, but they're not so out of reach. Cause you know how the, like, the world is. Everything's getting more expensive every day. They raising something every day and making the money not match it that we're making, that they're paying us. So with that being said, man, let's just enjoy this moment in front of us. And now let's cut to the next scene where I'm going to tell you which vehicle I would choose. Let's go. So like I told y'all before, man, these cars are my kids. And y'all making me choose, right? You know, we got practicality, we got speed, we got crazy performance, we got crazy performance, we got good looks, we got good looks if it's modded, unlimited potential if it's modded, unlimited potential if it's modded. But if I had to choose one of them to live with, if I had to be like, okay, I can only have one. If I had to give away one today, and I had to choose one today, I'm gonna give away the GR Supra, and I'm gonna keep the FL500 Civic Type R. Hey! So, with that being said, if you chose that, were you correct? What did you choose? Get in the comments and let me know. And um. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be going more and more in depth with these two cars, making comparisons. I'm blessed that I get to have both. And if you like cars like these, go ahead and subscribe to the MOC. That's me, Race Car Friends, Cutie Chaotic, and Blueprint One Ali. Go ahead and get you some merch at One Hurt, 100GameClothing.com. We outside, but I chose the FL5. GR Super, still crazy. If I only could do one. I'm gonna do this young lady right here. We outside. Let's go. Thanks for watching. See ya. See ya.